Okay, so I've just been watching a debate between Jon Snow of Channel 4 and um, a BBC executive. Well, not so much a debate, more, um, I guess you would call it an interview. Um, it was about the Jimmy Savile abuse case um, and Operation U Tree, which is ongoing. Um, I made a previous video about this, but there's another, uh, uh, let's say, dynamic to it, which I want to cover, and I don't believe I would have covered that in the last video. Um, first things first, uh, if you're not from the UK by the way, Jimmy Savile was a very popular television presenter um, from about the uh, late 60s I think until uh, till well into the 90s or even t early 2000s, I don't know exactly when he sort of went off air but he was particularly popular in the 70s and he was a household name he'd done a lot of work for charity but there was always something a bit strange about him in terms of his behavior on air and at the time it was dismissed because he was a lovable rogue a sort of uh, great benevolent public figure he um, died in 2011 and there was a big lavish public uh, funeral procession in Leeds where he was from um, but subsequently being revealed that in in all likelihood um, Savile was one of Britain's most prolific sex offenders uh, and paedophiles and the levels of de his depravity went to the extent of uh, alleged abuse in children's hospitals so what Operation Utri has revealed is abuse on a massive scale this guy really um, is one of Britain's worst ever paedophiles, quite possibly the worst. And the fact that he was a celebrity and he was in public light for so long is one of the most shocking aspects of this. Um, so understandably there's been huge public anger in the last three years with the revelations as they were. Initially, I remember at the time people dismiss the women coming forward now middle-aged women then young women or girls um, and they were coming forward with the allegations people will say oh they're just trying to make money or why come forward now and so on a few points about that uh, number one they couldn't come forward at the time because they were basically told to shut up by the powers that be now the BBC has a hell of a lot to answer for they've been very defensive about it all Hello, they've said, oh, it's a shocking scandal and so on, but they have a lot to answer for. And I don't believe that the top executives didn't know anything. I refuse to believe that. And if it's the case, Savile's dead, so he's never going to face justice. But I do believe the top executives of that time, uh, those who are still alive, should face some form of justice for covering up barbaric crimes. Um, in terms of Savile's guilt, people have said, some of his apologists have said, well, how can you blame a dead man? How can you prove it? But we're not talking about one or two claims here. We're talking about as many as 800 claims. And to just say, oh, they're only in it for money. The point is, the reason they've waited so long, I suspect, is because, because of the fact that Savile was protected. And actually, some of them did go forward at the time to try and report their cases, but they were basically told to shut up. They approached the BBC and they were silenced. So to slander these women as being liars, as being just in it for the money, given that Savile basically implicated himself, if you listen to a lot of that audio, you'd have to be pretty, you'd have to have your head in the sand to not realise there was blatantly something going on there. So I think, personally, I'd say 95% Savile was guilty. I mean, he implicated himself. So in the case of Savile, I have no doubt. He was a thoroughly evil paedophile and he can go to hell. Um, subsequently, other elderly male celebrities have been um, implicated in sexual abuse. Rolf Harris is the latest and he showed no remorse. Um, there is, of course, a risk that there will be um, side effects whereby innocent men will be implicated. Um, because of some connection or another, that is a risk. But the other risk is that victims of these predators won't get justice. So that's why it is important now 
given that Sable escaped for so long, that the police do take this very seriously, and that Operation U Tree is exhaustive. If that means an innocent man um, is questioned for a few hours, unfortunately that's a price that has to be paid. Um, I, I can understand innocent male celebrities being a bit concerned that they would be falsely implicated, but I think they also have to see the bigger picture and think, okay, well, a few hours of questioning versus um, getting these women justice. Now, I'm I'm a for a for a believer in innocent until proven guilty, but I also believe that what this abuse scandal has shown is that there can be no whitewashing, there can be no protection of those who are guilty. But actually, it's in this context that I'm making this video. Um, incidentally, I, I this video was for open-minded people, not for reactionary people. And you'll see why when I talk about it. Um, under that interview that I've just watched, I don't know the year, I'm guessing it was shortly after, because the sort of language that was being used it sounded like it was just as Operation U3 was launched. Um, a lot of the comments underneath were um, predictable. They were like about how evil Sava was, and uh, some of them were quite sadistic. There were things like, uh, I'll quote one: um, "I propose we raise a public memorial to Savile in the middle of London. We'll have his head in a urinal, and the public can come and piss in it." Um, other ones were calling for public executions for paedophiles and these sort of things, you get the general trend. So pretty sadistic stuff. Now first of all, be under no illusions. I am as sickened by anyone as for what the paedophiles do. Sexual abuse against children is one of the most heinous crimes. It damages them for life long into adulthood, it's it's a thoroughly sickening and evil crime. And paedophiles should absolutely be thoroughly punished. I believe some countries, I think Sweden offers castration. Um, there, was a there was an idea flo floated in the film X-Files, I want to believe, which of course is only a film, but it dealt with uh, one character as a paedophile, and it sort of proposed an isolated settlement in the middle of nowhere where paedophiles live among themselves. Um, I believe those sort of ideas should be floated. Maybe somewhere in the highlands of Scotland. If Scotland stays in the UK. Um, it's a remote area and these people should be isolated from all all uh, human beings, all other people and kept far away from children. There's certain circumstances which I think are an utter disgrace. In Australia there was a guy called I believe it was Geoffrey Leonard. He served his time, but he was then put back into a community where there was young children. And there was understandable outrage about that. I mean, he served a long prison sentence, but clearly, uh, and looking at his videos, he showed absolutely no remorse. He even gloated about it. You get two types of paedophiles. I mean, all paedophilia is awful, but some paedophiles are sickened by themselves and they hate themselves. Other paedophiles, like Savile, like Geoffrey Leonard, show no remorse. Um, and those sort of paedophiles are particularly heinous. But anyway, I want to address, to get to the point, I want to address some of the comments that were being made. First of all, the anger is totally understandable. But, and you know, those comments are just comments, and I, I think it's understandable. But, on the other hand, I think some of the people really would carry this through when they're talking about public executions and so on. Now that worries me because this country abolished public hangings. I made videos about this recently in 1868, 150 years ago almost. And with good cause. Now I hope we never ever return to those days, regardless of how heinous the crime is. I thoroughly believe that when society uses something like a public execution to punish a criminal, then society, or the state, reduces itself to the level of the criminal. Now, when you have an evil crime like uh, paedophilia, then of course you want the perpetrator to be punished severely. It's a totally human reaction. 
and you'd be a pretty cool person if you, or you'd be pretty robotic if you didn't have some moral outrage about that. So be under no illusions, I think paedophiles are scum, um, what they do. But I don't want to see a society whereby we reduce ourselves to their level. And I do believe public executions are barbaric. Now the people saying that, if you really want that, then you should be aware that is exactly what happens in rural Iran. So if you want British society to be like, like an Islamist country, like an Islamic theocracy, okay, but that is what it would go to. And also, there's another point that's very, very important. There have been several examples in this country of people jailed for years, only to later be exonerated. Sometimes they died in jail, sometimes they were released but can never cope with life, they struggle with alcoholism and so on. Later on they were exonerated because important evidence that had been withheld either by the police or by the powers that be only for them to be found more or less innocent. Now if you have public executions you run the risk of an innocent person being charged and found guilty of a crime and then basically lynched. I, I consider public executions a little better than a lynching except it's the state that's doing it and the public are watching it for entertainment. I believe they brutalise society and I, I don't want to see that at all. I don't think it's any better than people being stoned to death in Somalia. I really don't. I mean, paedophilia is a disgusting crime in our culture, and rightly so. Now, some Islamic states see adultery as an appalling crime, so their moral indignation justifies stoning. Of course, any civilised people would see it as barbaric. But likewise, if we go down this route, and if we, let's say, publicly hang paedophiles, then other Western countries will look on and think Britain is becoming a savage nation. And we would be. This has nothing to do with sympathising with these people. Like I say, they're scum. And you could argue they deserve it. It's more to do with the wider implications of what this means for society. Because there's another problem. Uh, mob mentality can really take hold. And I, I, it actually scares me to think that you could have a situation where once again innocent men and women are targeted. As they were about 15 years ago during the Sarah Payne backlash. She was a young schoolgirl who was murdered by a paedophile. And what happened after that was the tabloids stirred things up. And self-righteous buffoons took to the streets and hunted down paedophiles. The problem was, some of the people they targeted weren't even sex offenders. They happened to have the same name. In one case, there was a paediatrician whose shop was targeted because these stupid fucks... I'm sorry for the language, but I find that just sickening that um, innocent people can be targeted by uneducated reactionary fools who take the law into their own hands. Now, they're disgusted that the crimes themselves are understandable. Like I say, you'd have to be robotic not to be disgusted by it. But as soon as they target someone because they have the same name, then they lose all moral high ground whatsoever. And I believe that should be taken as a very serious crime that sort of vigilanteism. Similar thing happened um, a few years after that when a lot of innocent women who happened to resemble Maxine Carr were targeted by stupid yobs. Um, not long ago there was a man from um, he wasn't British I think he, was, he had a different background but um, he was blind, he was vulnerable. I think he was blind anyway, he was, he was disabled in, in some sense of the word and he lived on his own so he was seen as a bit of an outsider but he was falsely accused of sex crimes um, and he was targeted by some ignorant little thugs um, and the police later said that they had absolutely no evidence for the claims being levelled against um, this man. I made a video about it at the time, I'm just making this video spontaneously so I can't remember the exact case, but 
um, it, I find it deeply troubling that there are, there are people out there stupid enough to think that a rumour is enough evidence to lynch someone. To put this in context, um, this is what happened to black people in the United States in the early 20th century when black men were falsely accused of raping white women and lynched. Now, obviously then there was a racial dynamic which isn't necessarily the case here, but the mentality isn't that different in the sense that the stupid and the ignorant use their moral indignation as an excuse for something equally barbaric to the crime itself. I consider lynchings to be equally barbaric to paedophilia. They're both evil things. Lynchings are evil. And any civilized society should shun them completely. Because when you have that vigilante mindset, it's inevitable, actually, that innocent men and women are targeted. Even if guilty people get targeted, I would still say it's it's not justified, regardless of how evil that person is. And the reason it's not justified is because then society is reducing itself to the level of the perpetrator. Yes, let's be disgusted. Yes, let's want justice. But to advocate public executions, to advocate... Um, I've heard of people saying they should be skinned alive and so on. Now, that may be clear about this. If I had a young daughter which I don't, or the young son, and they were the victim of a paedophile, I, I would want that person's blood. Of course I would. It's a complete human reaction to be sickened by that. But, as a society, we really need to get some level of sanity. And I thoroughly believe that what a lot of people in this country want, which is this sort of vigilante style justice, I don't believe in it. I don't give a shit if you call me a bleeding heart liberal, because I'm not that actually. I consider myself conservative on crime, but... And I'll say for the third time, just to make the point clear, I think paedophiles are scum. I do not believe that what you people are advocating is the right way forward. Call me all the names you want, I don't give a shit. Because thuggish style justice cannot be the way forward. And these people are actually dangerous themselves. I suspect some of them are dangerous criminals themselves because they don't only target um, criminals, they also target anyone who's perceived to make anything that is considered to be too weak so th I would be targeted by these people. They're actually sa sadist psychopaths, some of them. So fuck them. I don't think they're any better than the worst paedophiles in terms of what they're advocating. I really don't. As a civilized society, we should really um, ensure that these evil sex offenders face severe punishment. I propose never being released from prison for the worst offenders. But, and that is punishment, I'm not talking about a nice little cell with a TV, I'm talking about no TV, none of the privileges that law-abiding citizens, I'm talking about hard, hard prison time. But what people advocate, no way. Because it, it reduces society to something very ugly, and I don't want to see that. Um, yeah.